Good evening. How are you doing? Are you good, everyone? Yes. So am I. It's a fantastic evening arranged by our red colleagues. What an honor talking about a research that we have never heard of. A research that was conducted by none but myself. So you're not finding this research anywhere. Right? So pay good attention and you might as well give yourselves good health at the end of the session. As you know, my name is Izzadu Rahman, and I'm going to talk about a particular research that I have conducted on myself for many years now. I'm 50 plus, but of course the research is not of that length. About 11 years back, I was one of the highest paid corporate employees in the country. Just left the multinational job, joined a local organization at the sea level. Life was fantastic. In about six months, time in that corporate job journey, I had a very odd time, you know, having a question coming from my inner self repeatedly. And the question was, do I love what I do? You might wonder why I had that kind of a question. I actually just exited from a company after 14 and a half years journey, which was a heavily value-driven, value-centric organization which used to spend millions of dollars in embedding values in their employees. And I worked for that company at home and abroad. So their first value was we like what we do. And those of us who grew differently, we used to say we love what we do. So it was not unnatural that I had that value talking from my inside. Do I love what I do? And every time I asked that question, I had a response that I did not like. Because the response was no, I don't like what I do. And just so you understand the perspective, as I said, I was the, one of the highest paid employees in the corporate world. A lot of digital money was flowing into the bank account. I could see that every month. Good prestige in the society, good recognition. I was like a hero in the community. But then again, why this odd question? I didn't know. And I probably know the answer today. And that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. And my subject tonight is focus and fulfillment. Let me begin with a quick question. What would your biggest regret be if this was your last day in life? I know it's not an easy question. I know that you're not feeling good about it. Neither I wish that this is your last day in this world. But if you have to ask this question to yourself, what is the biggest regret that I have if I'm leaving this world tonight? Don't give me the answer. I don't want you to die tonight. A research that was conducted in Australia by a lady called Bruni Ware. She was a nurse at a palliative care center where she used to look after people who were spending the last 12 weeks of their lives. And she recorded the regrets of dying from those people in a book called The Top Five Regrets of Dying. So I want to share this with you before we go to the main topic. Let's go one by one and see if you can relate some of those with you even today. The first one, I wish I would had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Next, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I would have the courage to express my feelings. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. And I wish that I had let myself be happier. Do some of you already have this kind of a question when you think about life? If you carefully look at these five questions or five regrets, you notice one thing, that we can sum it up in one sentence, that we don't regret what we did, we rather regret what we did not. How many of you agree to that? And why does that happen in our life? 
is a kind of answer that I looked for for the last 50 years or from the time I started looking for this answer. I'm going to share that with you tonight. We live in an age of dramatic destruction, ADD. We get distracted with so many things, inner calls, external calls, right? Our attention is stolen away by so many things today. I would have to believe that you and I are actually living in an age of dramatic destruction. Sitting here, you're thinking of something else. Please raise your hand if you agree. And our mind continuously swings between the past and the future. And very difficult to put it here in the present. The reason we are suffering today is because we are doing things, not knowing why we are doing what we are doing. We are doing things because our society has set some standards. When you study in schools, the education system which was designed long time back to support industrialism, we all chase numbers. At home, the parents want us to listen to them to become what part of their love. In the job, the office wants us to achieve results to become good in their scorebook. And in the community, we also have to maintain certain standards. So we are focusing on things that others are setting for ourselves. Would you agree? We are forgetting the fact that I'm a human. I need to know what is important to me. I need to know where I should focus. I need to know what is meaningful to me. So that's why the talk about focus comes. I will borrow a line from my favorite, Anthony Robbins, who is famously known as Tony Robbins, world famous coach and a motivational speaker. Tony says, where the focus goes, energy flows, which is so, so true. You focus on good thing, you feel good, and that defines your life. So focus equals feelings equals life. How many of you want to say yes with me for this? Brilliant. So we have lost our focus for life. We are chasing things that are, may not be the most important things in our life. We are doing things because others want us to do that. So back in 2010, when I was doing this corporate job, I had this discomfort inside me was probably because I was focusing on things that mattered for others, not to me, not to myself. This beautiful little kid, my niece, is the youngest in the whole family. We have five brothers. And she's like the powerhouse for us. Every week, I desperately look for an opportunity to go and spend some time with her. If you ask me, the time that I spend with her and the time afterwards, I feel so different that nothing else gives me that kind of a feeling. This is so powerful, Umaira. So let's talk about fulfillment. What is it? It's about knowing and it's a feeling that you are actually feeling good about your life. You have a meaning for your life. You do what you think matters in this world. You chase your own dreams. It's not just achieving success. It's not just achieving happiness. Of course, happiness and fulfillment was hand in hand. But if you're only focusing on achieving milestones in our life, we achieve great success. But after achieving a big success, you suddenly think, is this it that I was looking for? How many of you had that experience? You spend so much time, days and nights to achieve something big. And once it is with you, you suddenly feel, is that it? Or is it something else? Fulfillment never comes because we are focusing on wrong things. So, in terms of achieving fulfillment, how do we know that we feel fulfilled? I'll just highlight three things that are backed by research. One is we feel wholeness. We feel that we have a life that I live fully. Secondly, it's a feat. I feel a sense of congruence, a sense of alignment 
that this is the life that I want. This goes with my values. This goes with my inner feeling. This goes with what I respect, what I like and what I don't like. I have that kind of a fit with my life if it fulfilled. And thirdly, it gives me a value. It gives me a sense of significance. It gives me a sense of worthwhileness. It also tells me that my life matters to others. That is when I feel fulfilled. Right? So how can we feel fulfilled? My discussion will now turn into another aspect that I really want to impress you with. That I'm not talking about becoming selfish and having a fulfilling life. The reason I chose this career today is actually to help others grow. To give meaning to others. So the kind of thing that I'm going to share now, we all can practice those for ourselves and also use those to help others. I'm again borrowing a portion of it from the research and the publication by Tony Robbins. The first one is having a growth mindset, knowing that I'm growing because growth equals happiness. How many of you accept that? And when you have a growth mindset, we are very open. We want to learn new things, right? We care about others' views. And we try to live by things that we preach. Secondly, we want to live a life that are aligned with the values that we have, the core values that I hold inside me. Example, respecting others, having empathy, right? Having integrity and all those. Thirdly, we need to let go of the past. So whoever you are trying to help in the process to achieve a fulfilling life, let them know that we cannot change the past and we cannot live in the past. Every time you're thinking of anything in the past, you're losing an opportunity in the present moment. Also taking life as a balance. We cannot be perfectionists. We cannot expect everything to happen the way we want to happen. We have to accept that life will have ups and downs. That's why it's called life. It's not a matter of being perfect, it's a matter of living the life. When you have those kind of feeling with us, we understand that we are having a fulfilling life, all right? But why does that matter? You know, we live in a practical world where we work on salary, work on living, but does it really matter? Do the world care about it? It does. An interesting research done by Better Up demonstrates that nine out of 10 people in the US they want to sacrifice their earning if they have a meaningful job. And how much they want to sacrifice? As much as 34% of their entire life's earning going forward, they want to sacrifice. Imagine if they're sacrificing this much, which is probably higher than the money they spend for their living to get into a house. Is that critical? Research also suggests that when people have a good meaning for their work, and they have continuous meaning in what they do, they become more productive, they take less leave, right? They work extra hours every week, and that helps the organization to save as much as $9,000 per year per worker. It also suggests that the employee retention increases. So the cost of employee turnover reduces very significantly as much as $6.4 million per year for a 10,000 worker size organization. Fulfillment matters. I want to bring it to a close now, inviting you to rethink life based on the experience that I had. I was one of the highest paid employees, had great recognition in the community, but I did not have a fulfilling life. I wanted to refocus in life for things that are important to me. And a company called MindMapper was born back in 2010 with a catchy tagline called Shape Your Mind. I thought with all the learning that I have in this world, I'll share this with others continuously now and going forward and help people to think better and have a better shape of their life. Focus on things that matter and achieve fulfillment, not just success and happiness. If you ask me today, I'm one of the highest paid trainers in the whole country. And every time I have a paycheck or a good contract signed, me and my wife celebrate for one single reason. 
that we have more opportunity to serve others. So that gives us a better meaning. There are many families that we support, a lot of pride, a lot of satisfaction. And we don't publicize those. That's not our intention. Because we now realize giving more makes a better meaning to everyone's life. And we decided that the rest of our life will continuously give more to achieve a better meaning for our life. I wish each one of you an amazing life. Thank you.